Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to find out what it would actually take for us to deorbit the moon and essentially have it crash onto the planet Earth that you see in the background right there. Let's find out how many asteroids we would need to launch at the moon for this to happen and welcome to What The Math. So in one of the previous videos, we actually were able to uh, launch quite a lot of asteroids to try to uh, change the orbit of Mars. And as you may have seen in the previous video, it didn't really work very well. Now, could we, or I guess, could the universe potentially deorbit the moon one day by colliding enough of the asteroids from the asteroid belt and have it essentially crash onto the planet Earth? Well, let's do a little bit of science and find out if this could actually happen, um, at least hypothetically. First of all, if you look at our solar system, the asteroid belt is right here and pretty much everything in the asteroid belt spins in the same direction as our planet Earth. So most of the asteroids approaching planet Earth would probably be approaching from this direction as well. And so for them to have the most effect on our moon as they're crashing into it, our moon would have to be in this position of its orbit. Because if they actually collide with the moon when it's here, they are most likely are going to give it more acceleration, thus kicking it out of the Earth system. But if they collide with the moon when it's on this side, basically between the sun and the Earth, um, they would slow it down, thus giving it less velocity. Uh, let me actually demonstrate this to you. So here's the moon. So if the asteroid collides with the moon right here, it's going to slow down uh, dropping its orbit, moving it closer to Earth, but if the asteroid collides with the Moon here, it's going to accelerate the Moon, making the orbit more and more uh, eccentric, and at some point maybe even kicking out the Moon from the Earth-Moon system. So we're going to assume that the asteroids are going to be colliding here, moving directly toward the Moon at the speed that they would have here. And the average speed for a typical asteroid is usually between about 50 to 70 kilometers per second, uh, moving this way. And so here we are, uh, zoomed in a little bit closer to the Earth-Moon system. We're going to zoom into the Moon. And what we're trying to do right now is basically drop its velocity from about 980 meters per second to as close to zero as possible. Let's just take uh, the second biggest asteroid in the asteroid belt, or technically the second biggest object, but the biggest asteroid, which is Vesta. Um, it's about 263 kilometers in radius, and it's about one third of the mass of the largest object, which is Ceres. And we're going to collide it with the moon. Uh, it's going to move at a speed of about, let's say, 65 kilometers per second, which is a typical speed for an asteroid. Um, and here, we're going to collide it straight uh, face on with the moon. So basically, here comes our first collision with the moon. And we're going to be just looking at how much this changes the speed or the velocity, orbital velocity of the moon. Then we can essentially do a little bit of math to try to find out if we could deorbit the moon using the entire mass of the asteroid belt. So here, after the first collision, the velocity actually changed by about 200 meters per second, which is quite significant. It's actually significant enough for us to, um, I guess, use a few more Vestas to try to deorbit the moon completely. Now, let's see if we can actually do it. So this was the first um, collision. Let's do this maybe a couple more times. And here we're actually observing uh, all of this from a different angle from, from behind the moon. This is what it's going to look like, hypothetically, if a moon receives a very large asteroid collision, pretty much face on. As you can see, there's just a large explosion, tremendous earthquakes. But luckily on Earth, you wouldn't even really notice this until all of these fragments start falling from the sky. All right, so let's see if this actually affected the orbit um, significantly enough for us to approach close to planet Earth. And you'll see that it's practically touching Earth now. So that means that we just need one more collision from Vesta-like object, or in other words, a single collision with Ceres would be hypothetically enough for us to deorbit the Moon. So actually, let's try that. Let's see if a single Ceres, a single collision with the largest object from the asteroid belt, 
is going to be enough to do just that. So all I need to do here, collide the moon with Ceres, which is the largest object from the asteroid belt. Its whole mass is about the third of the entire mass of the asteroid belt. And it might actually have enough uh, mass in it to completely dislodge the moon from its orbit, thus having the moon fall to planet Earth. All right, so this is a pretty large explosion, a lot larger than it was with Vesta, but let's see what happened to moon's orbit. And it looks like the moon might actually be falling toward Earth after all. It seems that this was actually enough for us to dislodge the moon completely. And uh, this implies that basically, if you were to hypothetically collide about a third of the mass of the asteroid belt, um, just at the right location of the moon, it would be enough for us to um, dislodge the moon from its orbit and have it crush into planet Earth. Now, the chance of that happening is astronomical and pretty much impossible at this point, or I guess improbable, very, very improbable. But nevertheless, um, I guess somewhere out there in a parallel universe, it may have actually occurred. The moon may have actually been dislodged from its orbit due to collisions with asteroids or possibly some other objects, and then kind of slowly fell to planet Earth and collided with it. So this could happen if there was a collision with the moon large enough to dislodge it. But once again, it has to be in a very specific location of the moon. And also it has to be just at the right time. Anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. So now you know how much it would take to dislodge the moon from its orbit. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I'll see you guys later, space out, and as always, bye-bye.